Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Physiology Learning. I am Dr. Ram. Today we are going to discuss about compliance of the lung. Let's get into the topic. What do you understand by compliance of the lung? First, I will explain it in a simple nature. Suppose if we have a rubber band and we try to stretch it. Most of us were thinking that this stretching is the elasticity. Absolutely, it is not the elasticity. This is the compliance that is the distensibility how much the object can distend suppose if i leave this the elastic nature is bringing back to its original shape it is entirely opposite of the distensibility for example the stretching is the distensibility and the ability to recoil back is the elasticity of any object now let's see this type of example what happens in lungs for example, if you have a balloon and you try to blow through it and it is expanding in its, in its size or distending. This is called as compliance. This distension is called as compliance. Then once you leave the air in it, it is going to recoil back to its original shape. This original shape recoiling black is called as elasticity compliance is the distensibility and elasticity is the ability of the object to come back to its original shape suppose in a balloon example if i give one newton of force and the balloon is expanding say 200 ml then the compliance is 200 ml upon the force change in volume with respect to change in force it is called as compliance but in the lungs we don't give any force from outside it is the change in pulmonary pressure so in for a lung the compliance is defined as change in volume with respect to change in pressure this pressure can be trans thoracic pressure or trans pulmonary pressure depending upon the whether we are measuring it for the lung or the chest wall cavity so we have seen that compliance is inversely related to the elasticity so compliance i can write it is inversely proportional to elasticity now coming to the values now compliance of lung which is frequently asked in the mcq it is 150 ml per centimeter of water meaning the lung is going to expand 150 ml per centimeter change in pressure of water pressure then coming to the compliance of the chest wall the chest wall is more compliant and it is 200 ml per centimeter of water this has been already asked in mcqs multiple times so we are expecting either the chest wall or lung and chest wall together which is around 85 centimeter 85 ml per centimeter of water so these two can be potential new mcqs now coming to the opposing forces of compliance already we have seen that the elastic tissue will obviously oppose it suppose if any object or the lung is trying to distend the elastic tissue which is already present in the alveolar it is trying to collapse so this distension of the alveoli is opposed by the elastin present in the lung tissue the lung tissue has already elastin which is opposing this compliance then the lung is not a simple balloon it has one more force which is opposing it and causing the collapse which is acting against the compliance that is the surface tension as we can see here from the values even the elastic tissue is offering just one third of the total resistance but whereas the surface tension is offering two thirds of the total resistance meaning the surface tension is forcefully opposing the compliance or forcefully trying to collapse the lung this surface tension has been discussed in detail in the functional anatomy of the respiratory system you can have a look if you have any doubts and there itself we have seen that this happens the surface tension happens only where there is an air water interface suppose air molecule is there and water molecule is there then and there, there only the surface tension is going to come and act upon why we are stressing about these facts is because whenever we are studying the compliance curve the inflation curve and the deflation curve is going to be different and 
these are the major reasons for the different difference let's discuss about the compliance curve now first i will explain the normative curve here on the x axis the pressure is written it could be transpulmonary pressure in centimeters of water and along the y axis the volume is written the volume is taken and this is the percentage of maximum inflation so we have, we have given values of 100 50 and 10 percentage of total lung capacity even in the beginning of the curve here this curve is called as the compliance curve even at the beginning of the curve we can see that it is not in zero it's not in zero it is already having 10 percentage of tlc what is the reason even after the collapse of the alveoli some minimal amount of volume will be present inside the lung that is the reason we are starting the curve at 10 percentage of tlc this is an experimental study wherein the lung tissue studied and now they will try to give pressure from the outside and try to expand the lung so during expansion what they have observed is there was a curve which is forming as we can see we have written inflation the inflation curve was going like this and the deflation was coming back like this the deflation curve was like this here we have to understand few concepts why the inflation is like this and what is the reason for the deflation why deflation is not tracing back the inflation curve and there is a huge loop here there is a loop in between them this loop is physiologically called as hysteresis loop now we will try to understand the reason for this loop also this loop is called as hysteresis loop now let's discuss first about the inflation part alone during inflation we can see the initial part of the curve here as well as the final part of the curve both of them are relatively flat that is the change in volume with respect to change in pressure is very very low meaning there is not much of change in the volume you can see there is very little change of volume here when the pressure is changing but this part this middle portion of the curve the slope is huge and there is a huge amount of change in volume with respect to change in pressure so this alveoli as i told you everything is collapsed now so to open up a collapsed alveoli we need higher amount of force so the resistance offered by the collapsed alveoli is very high so that's why the part a which is the starting portion of the curve is flat and then after the alveoli starts more and more alveoli starts to be recruited and as well as they start to fill and finally this slope b curve is because of the recruitment of alveoli as well as the filling of the alveoli now once if all the alveoli are recruited and they have already been filled half is there any space for more air to be entered the answer is no so obviously what will happen the curve will again become flatter in the c region this region in the c region it is going to be flatter again so all alveoli are getting filled up this example we can correlate with the balloon also whenever we are blowing up a balloon the initial part is going to be suppose the balloon the small size to expand this the initially we need more force then after expansion whenever we are keeping on expanding and expanding then once it has attained a huge size then again it is going to offer more resistance so the beginning portion as well as the end portion of this inflation curve is going to be flat and because of offering of high resistance like that of a balloon now coming to the deflation curve in deflation curve it is smooth as well as it is having for example let's compare with one value suppose if i take 20 centimeter of water pressure and draw it along the inflation curve it is giving me just 20 to 20 percentage of the, the here we can see it is just giving me 20 percentage of the tlc but for the same pressure during deflation it is still around 75 percentage of tlc meaning that the deflation curve is more compliant why the deflation curve is more compliant and this is the reason for the hysteresis loop also because during deflation 
both the elastic force as well as the surface tension which were opposing the distension now they are going to help in the deflation so both the elastic tissue of the lung elastic tissue of lung plus the surface tension the surface tension inside the alveoli are going to help deflation so both of them are helping deflation so the curve is smooth as well as it is having a higher volume that is it means that they are more compliant during deflation so this is the reason for this compliance curve difference of inflation and deflation now we have seen that the surface tension is causing the loop like major part of the surface tension as well as the elastic tissue is causing the loop and surface tension will be contributing the maximum suppose if we are able to eliminate this surface tension will the compliance of lung increase obviously the answer is yes because the collapsing force which was opposing the distension if it is taken off the compliance of the lung is going to increase how to abolish the surface tension as all of us know surface tension happens in air water interface so they have done a study with saline filled lung now let's compare this previous curve this deflation curve with that of saline filled curve the saline filled curve is more compliant meaning even with small amount of pressure it is having the larger tlc even with smaller amount of pressure it is having a larger tlc as we can see here even with 20 mm rise in pressure it is having a larger total lung capacity let it compliance is more so what is the reason in saline filled lung there is no air water interface So there is no surface tension so there is no surface tension so a saline filled lung obviously saline filled lung is not useful for gaseous exchange but still experimentally they have seen that how much powerful surface tension is to cause the collapse of the alveoli this diagram clearly shows us the phenomena now let's try to understand how the compliance curves differ in various diseases this is an MCQ, this is a clinical MCQ. You might get a diagram like this and they will give you four options to choose the disease which is causing the red curve or the pink curve. Anything they can be asked. Here along the x-axis we have the transpulmonary pressure and along the y-axis we have the lung volume. So these two things we have it. And whenever the curve is shifted above and to the left, it means that they are more compliant like a saline filled lung it's not a saline filled lung but it, it is more compliant now let's try to understand the disease over there here if the curve is coming down it means that it is less compliant for the given amount of pressure this curve volume is going to be less in comparison with that of the other two curves so for the same pressure the curve let's name them a b c a is going to be more compliant than b than c so the compliance of a is very high in which disease the compliance is very high do you know any disease that leads to destruction of the elastin yes the answer is emphysema yeah so in an emphysematous lung in an emphysematous lung or in disease emphysema the curve is going to be more compliant and the curve the example disease is emphysema now if the lung is having some fibrosis do you think the lung will be more compliant fibrosis means the fibrotic tissue is there so it is will be less compliant and the example is lung fibrosis so this can be a clinical based mcq Thank you for listening. Hope it's clear. In the next section, we will be discussing about the ventilation perfusion ratio. If you have any doubts, please drop in the comment section. Thank you.